Everybody following Jesus expected him to be king. He was welcomed on Sunday with the shouts of Hosanna to the highest. Then he went to the temple, turning tables and teaching them who the true Messiah is. But as they expect him to win over this Roman Empire, he was arrested. How is this king going to win over the empire, sin and death? But before we get to that, maybe it's time for us to step back and think about the love of this Christ as we talk about his crucifixion today. They curse and laugh, you do not fight. A thousand men you crucify. It's crimson stains I fill your mind. You look upon me with delight. From throne to cross, you came to die. A crown for thorns to bring. have perfected the art and science of pain. They have perfected the art and science of death penalty. They have taken everything that can hurt someone and placed it into a spectacle of sorts. It starts with a public trial. The man is taken to a public hearing where he is hurled with curses and he is talked to, talked down to. And then Jesus had six of this. He had three of them in the religious courts and three of them in the civil courts. And towards the end of it, he was dragged into the scourging where he was lashed down, stripped of his clothes and made to carry his cross. While walking, people will spit at him, hurling insults and curses. And towards the end of this excruciating pain, he'll be taken into the cross. A nail will be driven down his arms. And he will be taken to the cross, tilted ever so slightly so that his body will not be able to breathe without pushing his feet up. And this would would mean trying to gasp air while your lungs is being filled with blood. This slow, painful, shameful death on the cross is something that we know of, something we've seen in movies. But why? Why is this so important that we understand not only the seriousness of this act, but also the significance of it today. I'd like to make the case that on the cross of Christ, we see the depth of our sin, the greatness of God's love, and the triumph of God's love over sin and death. We start with the depth of our sin. In Luke chapter 23, Verse 44, it describes how Jesus in his last moments. It was now the sixth hour and there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn into. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. 
On the cross, we see Jesus. Nothing beautiful about it. Body scourged, dripping with blood, gasping for air. But we also see how serious God is about sin. That truly, on the cross, we see the depth of our sin. The brokenness of the world. We know that as the story goes, there, was, there were two criminals beside him. One on his right and one on his left. The two of them equally, really, are guilty of their offense. And the people, while hurling their curses, the, the soldiers doing lots for his clothes, we see the depth of human depravity, how bad sin is. It's interesting because today we, we look at sin and, and we take it so casually. We look at sin and we take it so usually. It has become an ordinary thing. We have made excuses like, everybody's doing it. We're just having fun. And if you think about it, that's the, maybe the same excuse as the people who were on that cross or who were on that um, penalty the soldiers were shouting out and the people were hurling insults. We're just having fun. Everybody's doing it. In a time where we take sin so lightly, will we step back and say, God takes sin so seriously, He died for it. God takes sin so seriously, He went through the most painful kind of death for it. But not only do we see how serious God is to sin, we also see how great the love God, of God is. In the same account in Luke, the two criminals were talking to Jesus. One of them saying, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and save us. The other criminal rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And Jesus' response was this, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And this response was because the criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As I've said, not only do we see the depth of our sin on the cross, but the greatness of God's love. That this man who deserves this death was forgiven and will be taken to paradise. Not of the things that he has done in the past and not of the things that he will do in the future not of any act of His volition, but only because of faith. Jesus shows His love for this man. In a time where we think of love as something that is earned, Jesus showcased on the cross that love is something that God gives because of faith. Only through faith to receive the grace of God, not for our works, not because of what we will do. On the cross, He interceded. On the cross, He showcased the promise of the love of God. And as He breathed His last, we see the triumph of God's love over sin and death. He says in His word, Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And the crowds that had assembled over this spectacle, when they saw that what was taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at the distance watching these things.
that as they saw Jesus dying on the cross, as the veil was torn apart, one centurion saw it and said, surely this man is innocent. And people realized what is happening. That the cross is a statement over sin and death. The tearing of the veil signifying that people can now approach the holy of holies through the sacrifice of Jesus. God has won through the cross. On human eyes, we would feel like, really? It seemed like the Roman Empire has won. It seems like the Satan has won. The king seems to be dead. But the truth is, the story does not end with Jesus' death. Because again, Christ will rise again. See, on the cross, we see Jesus, the Christ, and we see the depth of our sin, the greatness of God's love, and its triumph over sin and death. This is important because in a time where we are, it feels as if the enemy has won. With the death, maybe in your family, the uncertainty of our jobs, maybe, the uncertainty of our economy, it could certainly feel like the enemy has won. But over and over again, as we look back to the cross and the death of Jesus, we are reminded that death is not the final say. We're reminded that God has won. And I don't know where you are in your journey in faith. Maybe you're just new to this and maybe you came along this video and you saw it and you decided to watch it. I want you to know, you are never too far away. Just like that criminal. It's not about your past or what you will do in the future, but truly the grace of God that would lead you to repentance and your faith. And as we draw to a close, maybe it's time also, if you have been in faith for the longest time, you have been following Jesus, maybe it's an invitation to reflect on the cross. Think about the depth of our sin, the greatness of God's love, and our victory in Him. I invite you to pray. Oh, well, Father, we thank you for reminding us of your love demonstrated by Jesus who suffered, died. But thank you, O oh God, that death is not the final say. It is victory on you. Lord, we ask you with our friends who are going through some of the toughest times of their life, Lord, I pray that you would remind them that you have won. Lord, I pray for comfort for those who are enduring, for those who are going through some kind of pain. Thank you for reminding us that you felt pain, if not the same, even worse. And you have demonstrated how it is to love even beyond pain. Lord, I pray for those who are not in pain. Maybe you are in the season reminding them of your love. You in the season are reminding them of how serious sin is and how great your love is. Lord, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Death gave way to glorious light And tears away the chains that bind Now sons and daughters in your eyes You looked upon us with
On that cross, there was nothing beautiful. It was just a dying Savior for the sake of humanity. But your love is beautiful. God's love is beautiful. And the expression of the most beautiful love. Thank you for joining our Holy Week Devo. And if you like this video, go ahead and share it. And have a great day.